Parkinson's or any kind of neurodegenerative ugh, neurodegenerative I hope you guys are doing well today. In this video, I wanted to talk about the ongoing topic of Black Lives Matter. It's been a crazy few weeks in terms of like black people and police brutality. We've had a lot of cases, a lot of um, discussion around the topic of police brutality and Black Lives Matter. Now, obviously, this has been going on for a very long time. We recently had the case in America with the shooting of Alton Sterling. Uh, well, not even the shooting, the murder of Alton Sterling. That video was really, really hard to watch. I didn't actually watch the whole video. Now, when the video initially came out, there was a lot of protest. There was a lot of discussion about Black Lives Matter and police brutality. And it was kind of hard for me because I wanted to make a video about it. But at the same time, I didn't really know what to say. And I didn't just want to make a video for the sake of making a video. I did tweet about it and Instagram it to show my support and I was having discussions with my family and friends but in terms of YouTube I didn't really have anything substantial to come on camera and say. I would just be kind of regurgitating what everyone else would be saying and sometimes I think we as people we always expect for others or for people that we see in a celebrity light. Now I'm not talking about myself here but I saw a lot of people saying um, why isn't this celebrity or this kind of YouTube like big YouTube personality saying something about it and I think we shouldn't always wait for celebrities or for people that are in the limelight to say stuff. I don't think we should expect it of them because sometimes, as we've seen with this Alton Sterling cases, for some of these celebrities, it would have been so much better if they just shut their mouth and just didn't say anything at all. By all means, it's all good to have discussions and to talk about these kind of things, but whenever you put something on the internet, it's permanent. Even if you try to delete it later on, whatever you say, people take it at face value and they can run with it. And some people generally don't know what to say, so they may not say a lot, but they will show their support, and that's how I felt in that situation. And another thing, it made kind of doing videos about fashion and lookbooks kind of trivial, like I felt a bit stupid kind of filming a lookbook when I'm thinking there's so many other things in this world happening right now that this just seems so trivial to be thinking about or to even be posting about but at the same time it's good to remember that everything has a purpose and everything has importance so although I might have felt like my lookbook was just why am I doing this I was having a conversation with my friend and she was like yeah but Michelle at the same time what you're doing will help someone else and just because I'm filming this type of video or talking about something else that isn't the current discussion or on topic doesn't mean that I'm taking away from all that I'm not kind of how do I say acknowledging what is happening now with saying that there was a story that I recently read and it was about a man called Charles Kennedy he's a medical practitioner or a therapist at a center for um, people with disabilities in America now in this situation what happened is that one of the clients a man um, with autism actually ventured out of the center and were sitting in the middle of the road playing with a toy truck and someone made a 911 call and said that there was a man outside and he was playing with a gun so the police came in and Charles Kennedy was out outside trying to get his client back inside and from the stories and articles that I've read he said that he was talking to the policeman telling them that he was unarmed and that the guy had autism and he was playing with a toy truck and there was no need to shoot or anything and he still got shot and there's actually a video of him um, lying down on the ground with his hands still in the air after he got shot in the leg. He got shot in the leg three times I believe and when you watch the video or even see pictures about it this man is literally on the ground still with his hands up in the air and he got shot and the reason why this story really resonated with me is because I have a little brother who has autism he is my world and you guys would have already seen him already pass on my he sometimes likes to disrupt me when I'm like making videos or he'll make an appearance in some of my videos Soma come Soma come Soma this is my little brother pass Soma do you want to unbox my thing with me huh you're shaking your thing. Shake, shake. Don't hit me. Okay, Pasoma, I need to finish this video. I love all my siblings, but I'm particularly protective of him because of the fact that he does have autism and because of the fact that he doesn't talk. With autism, there's a spectrum. There's not very clear definition of what it actually is. And there's still a lot of studies going on about what is autism because 
every autistic child is different. And if you actually want to go into the neurology of autism, which is like one of my favorite, 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 neurology and cardiology, my favorite two branches of science. Um, with people with autism, what you have is, we have certain levels of, hmm, how do I explain this? Synapses. So in our brain, well in our body, we have neurons and these are kind of like the hubs of information and kind of messages that get passed along our bodies. So with people with autism, they have more synapses and a synapse is where two neurons, your pre and your postsynaptic neurons will come together and kind of transfer their signals. With people with autism, what they found is that they actually have a surplus of um, these um, synapses. So they have more synapses than a regular person would have, which is why you have people with autism that are extremely smart and you have people with autism like with my brother he likes to put things in a line and he's really good at organizing things like when my little brother wants to organize something it will be organized and if we touch it he just goes crazy and what you actually see is you have people with autism that have um, a lot of synapses you have um, regular people that have a certain kind of number of synapses and when you see people that have Parkinson's or any kind of neurodegenerative ugh, I always find it hard to say that word. Neurodegenerative. <laughs> Neurodegenerative disorders such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. You actually see, um, this is so funny, one of my lecture slides I actually have this. There's a graph of, um, there's a graph showing how many dendrites and how much um, neurosynapses you actually see. And when you look at people with Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, they have less, which is why you have memory loss. Now, mashallah, he actually survived and he did an interview with an American news station and in the interview he actually said that when he got shot he asked the police officer why did you shoot me and the police officer replied that he didn't know. However other reports have come out to say that the police officer then said that he'd had no communication with um, Mr. Kennedy so Mr. Kennedy's statement could be classed as void however my personal belief is I don't think it is void I think with a lot of these policemen not all but some I think they're afraid of black men especially in this kind of the atmosphere right now is very tense in terms of between black people and the police now I know some people are gonna say oh but you're British so what do you know about it we have police brutality in Britain as well it's not as publicized as America and I think one of the main reasons why is because we don't I don't think there's a lot of video footage about police brutality in the UK I think if it was and if it went as viral as some of the police brutality in America did I think there would be more of a discussion about um, police brutality in Britain because it's definitely a discussion that needs to be had and that we really need to talk about and talk about more it's lovely supporting our brothers and sisters in America but we also have to be consciously aware of that this is happening to us as well in this country so yeah with the kind of tension that it is right now I think a few police officers are intimidated by black men because I can imagine that it is very tense you have a community of people that feel isolated and feel like if a police officer stops me they're gonna want to shoot me so I need to be on my guard and then you have police officers that are probably coming and thinking if I'm approaching this black person they probably think that I'm going to shoot them or something or they may have a gun to come against me and I need to be prepared but the problem with that is you are a police officer you are meant to be trained to decipher different situations and especially in this situation with this autistic man the name of the officer who actually shot Mr Kennedy is called Jonathan Nalila and in his statement he said that his target was actually the autistic man and not Mr Kingsley and I find that really hard to believe in fact I don't believe it at all um, from what I've read he's a member of the sniper team not sniper team no SWAT team um, and from what I've read is that they're trained to shoot their target and to not miss their target and I know some people have said that he was only a member for four years so he was probably kind of a junior member but I don't buy that either he said in his statement that his target was the autistic man even though you could clearly see in the video that the man was playing with a toy truck and not a gun so when you came to that situation you could see what's, what was happening mr. Kingsley had told you that he's unarmed you can see that there's this guy that is clearly um, with a disability playing with a toy truck you can understand the situation that's going on you can decipher and use common sense but then again common sense isn't common to everyone you can use your common sense to see this is what is going on there is no gun this man is telling me he's unarmed I can't see any arm on him so you have had no justification to shoot him and then to then say that the autistic guy was your target when you could see he was playing with a truck and you really think that that makes it any better and if the autistic guy was your target why is it that it took them 20 minutes to get any medical assistance to Mr. Kingsley after they shot him and also they handcuffed him 
Wouldn't you handcuff your intended target? Wouldn't you have handcuffed the autistic guy because that was the person that you had come for? Why are you then handcuffing this other man who you have accidentally shot? Wouldn't you try to get medical assistance to him as soon as possible and then deal with your supposedly actual target? And this is the perfect example of doing everything the right way and still getting shot and also being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if I was an American living in America, I'd be thinking, so where am I safe? Even at my job, where I'm trying to do what I'm being paid for, trying to do even more than I'm being paid for, Mr. Kingsley didn't have to go out to get his client. He could have left him there. Then the police would have come and this would have been totally different. If he had actually shot that autistic guy, this this would have, there would have been no question about it. There definitely needs to be a conversation and there definitely needs to be a solution and I definitely think that police officers need to be taught if they're not already. I would assume that this would be part of training, how to come into a situation, see what's going on and actually assess it and then through your assessment then decide what to do. There was no need to shoot that man at all and then to say that your target was the autistic guy. Like, are you blind? This story really, really angered me because I always fear for my little brother because I always think a lot of people don't know about autism. Me, myself, I'm going to put my hands up and say I was really oblivious to what autism was. I was oblivious to kind of people with disabilities because I never, there was no one in my family that had a disability until my brother came into our family. And now, even when I'm at work, I see a lot of disabled children and I'm able to decipher um, like what kind of disability they have from how they act. And it's made me more conscious and made me more aware of how people maneuver. For example, you can be on a train and you'll see a man maybe sitting across from you and he's acting a bit weird and you're thinking, why is he acting like that? And you don't know, he could be a guy that has autism because they interact in different ways. I definitely think more needs to be done in training people and people learning about people with disabilities. Also, in terms of police brutality, I was listening to a podcast recently, um, the 20 something podcast, I'll link it below. I love to listen to it. Um, I forgot the name of the girl who actually does it. There's two of them now. It used to be only her, but she has someone else doing it with her. But they were actually talking about, um, in the past and the civil rights movement how black people have tried to tackle discrimination and what kind of methods they've done so they talked about protest and they also talked about um boycott and one interesting thing in that podcast that i was actually having a discussion with one of my friends with hey josh how you doing hey bro <laughs> protesting is good and i think protesting gives a sense of unity in most cases they haven't, unfortunately. For example, we protested about student fees in the UK and they still went up. People have been protesting about Black Lives Matters and people are still getting killed. Now, I don't have all the answers. I don't think anyone does. This is gonna be a continued discussion until we find a way or until something gets done because this can't keep on going. The respect and the value of black lives is literally none at this moment in terms of not even just police, just in general, even how people talk about this, these situations, how people give justifications of, oh, maybe he shot because, maybe he shot because. I think the problem right now is the police force and how sometimes as humans, unfortunately, when we get to a place of power, we kind of take it for granted. Or when we're in a certain position, we kind of demand respect. And if someone isn't respecting us, we feel like we have to enforce that respect on us. And I do think that is the case with some of these police officers. They feel like sometimes they're being disrespected or sometimes it's actually fear. It's actually fear. You fear what you don't know. And if you don't know, then you should not be on that case. And if you are a police officer and you're in that uniform, I'm gonna assume that you've had enough training to deal with every sort of situation. And if you feel like, I'm scared, I can't go into this situation, then don't go into that situation. Call on another police officer. You need to know your limitations. Another thing is people saying that Black Lives Matter is racist and all lives matter. I don't even want to explain it because I've seen people talk about Blue Lives Matter when we had the shootings with um, some police officers, unfortunately. I don't condone the shooting of police officers at all. This is not kind of, like we're not in the Stone Age right now, no disrespect to the Stone Age, but this is not an eye for an eye and a leg for a leg. A killing does not justify another killing at all. However, if you're able to say blue lives matter, how can you not understand what black lives matter is? You're just being ignorant. You know what's going on. You're being ignorant. You want to be choosy and you don't want to face the actual problem. And I see that with a lot of people recently. You don't want to face what is going on. You just want to say, oh, I don't see color. Everyone is the same because you have the privilege of not seeing color. You actually have the privilege of not seeing color. If you are a black person or even a ethnic minority, I even hate that word, like, I'm not a minority, 
I'm not a minority. Like, I'm not a minority. <laughs> you can say you don't see colour because it doesn't affect you. You have the privilege of saying you don't see colour because you don't have to deal with colour. You're essentially colourless. Now, one of the solutions that I do think would help in this situation and kind of better it is if they stopped putting these police officers on paid administrative leave. So this um, police officer, Jonathan Alida, who actually shot Mrs. Kingsley, if someone knows that there's not a big consequence for what they're going to do, they're going to keep on doing it. They get suspended on paid leave. Suspend them with no pay until the investigation is done. Unfortunately, in this world that we live in, money does talk, and when you hit someone's pockets, that's when they feel it. For example, Wendy Williams made that comment about why there are historically um, black colleges in the USA, and then she started to backtrack on her word and said, no, she didn't mean that, that's not what she was trying to say. Why? Because sponsors were starting to pull out of her show, and she was starting to get hit, where? In her pockets. So them coins of hers were starting to get hit. When you hit people in their pockets, that's when they start thinking that's when common sense becomes common again that's when they know okay if this is going to affect my livelihood and how i live i'm going to be more conscious and more alert to not so do i hope this. you guys enjoyed this video i hope we can start a discussion let me know in the comment section below what you think about this whole black lives matters what you think about the alton sterling case and the charles kingsley case as well i'll put a link or i will try to find a link to the video if it is still available so that you can watch it yourself and i hope you guys have a lovely day and i'll see you all in my next video Bye.